Hello friends, today is July 10th. You know what, I bought this dress, like, okay, some of you are gonna know what this dress is from. It's from the movie um, 13 Going On 30, and it's just the cutest dress. But even though I got the biggest size, it is not made for somebody with a large bust. I'm sad because this dress is so cute and I've wanted it for forever but it just doesn't it doesn't work it just like I hang out of it everywhere so I'm kind of sad but it's still a cute dress isn't it like look at that that's so cute anyway I just don't know how to make it work you know Maybe, maybe if I wore something else under it, like, maybe some of you have some suggestion, suggestions on how to style this dress so that it works, because I guess I can't, I just can't figure it out. It's such a cute dress though. Look at those colors. I love it. And that movie is so iconic. But anyway, be right back. Okay, so I guess this is what I'm wearing today. Not nearly as cute. I think it makes me look kind of chubby, but the dress I wanted to wear isn't going to work. So. <sighs> well, let's see. Today is Wednesday. I got two more days. Well, actually, yeah, today and tomorrow to finish getting ready for um for bay days or the booth that i'm doing i think i am gonna dye my hair again i do like the pastel i really do but i want it to be more bold for the the bay days booth and i am gonna be out in the sun a lot so it's probably going to fade rather quickly um so i'll be back to pastel probably faster than i normally would which is fine. So I think I'm going to try to dye my hair today. We'll see. I I keep having these basically like an emotional freeze where I'll get through part of the day and I'm fine and then I'm just not. There's just so much going on with Robbie leaving and other things that are going on but, and just so many things that have happened this year, both good and bad. I had made like, I don't know, like four or five videos that I wasn't sure if I was going to make public. Just talking about the things that are more private that I've been going through. And then yesterday I just deleted them because what's the point? It's not stuff I'm gonna really make public anyway. It's stuff that I'm going through with other people. Um, some people that like purposely make my life difficult because they have nothing better to do. Uh, things with my, my oldest daughter, um, the one that's never been on any of my videos and we adopted her Gosh, it's almost been a year now um, since the adoption was legalized because uh, because of the difficulties in adopting from foster care, um, we weren't actually able to make the adoption complete until she was 18. Uh, and then things just spiraled downhill after that. And I haven't really talked about that publicly. It just hurts too much and I don't know what to say. Um, things with, things with my marriage, you know, it's just life in general, there's some hard things 
and it did help me to talk to the camera and just kind of get it out of my own head but there's just certain things that really are just not going to be talked about on this platform Whenever I'm going through a hard time, one of the things that I tend to do is sit in the bathtub and cry. I've been doing a lot of that lately. Just running a hot bath and I'm crying or sitting in the shower and crying, you know. Sometimes buying makeup makes me feel better, but can't do that all the time because that gets expensive. And also it's still just like a temporary feel better, you know? It doesn't solve the problem. Kind of can create new problems because then you're, you're spending too much and stuff. Not that. There's aspects of parenting that nothing really ever prepares you for. Things like your kid going off to war or making choices that you don't want for them or you know even if it's not necessarily something dangerous it can still be something that it's like oh well you know it can be really hard to let's say like watch your kid take a direction in life that you know is going to not really go well but there's nothing you can do about it because they're adults now and then there's like you know I know I guess you could say it's my own fault because I have so many kids but I've got kids in like every stage of life right now and I'm watching them try to navigate their adult lives and I'm so grateful that I have a good relationship with my kids because I get to be involved and try to help them figure it out but ultimately they have to figure it out themselves like I can't do that for them and and then there's you know my teenagers in the teenage years you got to take your hands off the wheel in a lot of ways you can't you know you can't protect them from everything they do have to make they have to make their own choices and decisions and that can be that can be really hard too because sometimes they make decisions that aren't necessarily the best for them or it might not even be them it could be like their friends you know their the kids as friends could be going through some things or you know whatever and then i got middle school age kids and they're dealing with you know stuff like body image issues and trying to figure out who they are and you know what they like what they don't like and that can be it can be a lot too and then i got younger kids that are you know in the in the young kid stage and it's just, it can be a lot sometimes. Trying to make sure everybody's like emotional needs are met. The physical needs are the easy part, actually. Making sure everybody's fed and clothed and, you know, has what they need physically. That's easy. It's expensive, but it's easy. But making sure everybody's emotionally healthy and spiritually healthy and, you know, doing okay 
in various aspects of life, that's the hard part. It, that takes a lot, a lot, a lot of awareness, a lot of, a lot of involvement, a lot of, um, checking up on, talking, drawing the appropriate boundaries, not getting into their private world so far that they push you away and you know waiting for them to come to you when you know that something's wrong but also knowing when to jump in and be like no this has to be talked about now that is hard you know i didn't have active involved parents i really did my mom my mom just slept all the time she she was disabled and she just kind of gave up on life and she wasn't involved she wasn't there the only thing she did was set rules but the rules often didn't make sense she treated us like we weren't worthy of being trusted and so nothing we did was ever enough to prove that we could be trusted and i was a good kid like i didn't break rules i didn't do things i didn't experiment with stuff i just didn't that wasn't that wasn't me you know that wasn't who i was and i was always working i was at school or i was at work i was raising my siblings from a very young age and I was just always hyper responsible um, because of that I was always hyper aware that I needed to set a good example and I needed to be the responsible one and take care of everybody and I learned a lot about parenting while raising my siblings I actually I took parenting classes in high school um, it was almost as if I had a hard time understanding my siblings because they were, they were typical kids. They were doing typical kid things. They were, I, I didn't have that. I didn't do that. I didn't have a rebellious phase. I didn't, um, get into trouble. And my, my siblings did to an extent. And I didn't know how to handle that. So I took parenting classes and I learned a lot and I was definitely not a perfect parent for my siblings. I mean, I was a teenager, so, you know, I learned a lot through that, but then we live in a different world these days and, uh, parenting looks different now. And when it's your own kids, it's different. And it, you know, I'm always worried that I'm going to screw it up somehow. I, I know you, nobody can be a perfect parent. There's no such thing as a perfect parent. And every child requires somewhat different of an approach based on their personality, um, their likes and dislikes, what they're drawn to. Every child requires something a bit different. There is no blanket approach to parenting at all. Everything is like some kids need a heavy hand. Some kids, if you use a heavy hand, it, it, I'm not talking about hitting. Don't get me wrong. Um, I'm talking about like strict rules and that sort of thing. Some kids need that, but other kids will absolutely can't function, will absolutely be destroyed if they're if you're too hard on them and it's so hard to know unless you're actively involved every single day it's so hard to know which direction to go with which kids and then a lot of times it looks unfair well why is this one allowed more computer time than that one well it's because 
this one got their homework done and you didn't, you know, that sort of thing. It's so there's this constant battle with the kids where they're like, well, you made this one do that chore and you didn't, you didn't make that one. Or, um, how come I had to mow the lawn when I was 13, but he doesn't have to. Well, different physical needs, different physical abilities. You know, my older boys wanted to start mowing lawns when they were young. And so they did. And I relied on them because I was, you know, I was pregnant at the time with the twins. And so I relied on the boys to do the lawn because my husband didn't never did. I can literally count on my hands probably like five or six times that my husband ever mowed the lawn. I always either had to hire somebody or do it myself. And so the bigger boys, because they, you know, were basically growing up in a time where I was often pregnant. They got trained on doing those jobs a lot younger than um, some of the other kids. Now, Bray Tech and Taylor are the same age, and I haven't really had them mowing lawns because I do it. That's the thing that it's just been like, well, I'm physically strong enough to do it, so I do it, and I, that's just how it ended up. And my older boys, it causes a lot of contention for them, like, well, you made us do it. Well, but yeah, but you also wanted to do it. I got paid to do it. Now, I'm the one doing our neighbor's lawn for money. Just a little bit of cash. Because, you know, somebody needs to do it. And I don't know if I should be making Bray Tech and Taylor do it or not. They're also not, I don't know, Robbie's always been into like physical exercise so he was always stronger and you know the other kids are not and then Taylor's really short so it's just like different physical needs, different physical abilities kind of determines things but the kids just see it as being unfair. And there's this constant worry, am I doing the right thing? Am I being fair? Am I parenting correctly? There's this constant, I think for any parent, it never really goes away. Always worried, am I doing the right thing? You know, I don't want to overload them with too many chores, but I don't want to um, raise irresponsible kids that don't know how to do things. You know what I mean? So the kids have chores and they're always complaining. Oh, you make me too do too much. You make me do too much. And there's some times where I feel guilty and then I'll just do all of it myself in a day. And then, then I feel guilty for not having them do it because I'm like, well, what am I really teaching them here? Parenting is so, it's very rewarding, it's wonderful, but it's also complicated, frustrating, difficult, and you just never know for sure if you're doing enough, if you're doing it right, if you're dropping the ball in some sort of way. It's one of those jobs that you can't, at the end of the day, you, you don't have anything to be like, hey, look what I did. I built a house. I did this. I did that. It takes a lifetime to know if you did it right or not. And then you still wonder and you still worry because it's relationships. You know, it's not cut and dry. It's not easy. I've seen so many, not usually dads, but moms, so many moms. A lot of my friends are much older than me and they constantly talk about everything they think they did wrong as a mom because their kid made an adult choice that wasn't 
in line with the values they tried to teach them. And it's like, we're, you know, we're raising people, literal people, and they're, they've got free will. They're going to make their own decisions. Even God couldn't stop Adam and Eve from making bad decisions. Um, so it's like, parenthood is messy, you guys. It's messy, it's confusing, it can be frustrating, it's wonderful, and it's scary. It's, it's so, so many things, all at once. You think it's hard when they're babies, and they need you constantly, and you're so worried that you're going to screw up, so worried that they're going to cry too long or get sick or something, and you're not sleeping because they're awake at night. And then they start to get older and you think, oh, maybe it's going to be easier. But then they start doing things like climbing on the fridge or running out into traffic. And you got to be constantly on your toes to make sure they don't hurt themselves. And then they get to be middle schoolers or, well, grade schoolers. They get to be grade schoolers. And there's so much fun to play with and stuff, but they can also be like super obnoxious and... They get in all these fights with each other over like silly things, fights with their friends. Not not every day or anything. Like it's not horrible. It just happens. You know, kids have drama because we're they're people. And then they get to be middle schoolers and they go through this whole learning who they are and their bodies are changing and it's stressful and they don't they don't know one minute to the next how they feel and you gotta help them through that and and then they get to be high schoolers and some high schoolers do really great and they level out and they're really mature but then you worry well what if they're taking on too much what if they're being too responsible and missing out on being a kid because i did that i was way too responsible i completely missed my teenager phase i, d I didn't have one i was i went from being a middle an awkward middle schooler to raising three other kids um I didn't have a teenager life. I, I just didn't. Um, so I worry about well, what if my kids try to take on too much and I don't ever want them to take on too much and end up like resenting it. And then, um, cause I do have like Ronan is hyper responsible. He always has been. And so my, my thing with him is always making sure I'm not putting too much on him. And I may overcorrect the other way and put like less chores on him than what he could be doing because I'm so worried about overloading him. And then, um, because Ronan tends to be the one that takes on responsibility for his siblings. I'm like, no, no, that's probably not a good thing. You know what I mean? Like, you know, and then, then they get to be young adults and I don't know. My my daughter came to me with a whole lot of trauma um, from foster care and everything, and I thought I was getting her on a good path, and she's I don't even know what she's up to because she's completely cut everybody off. I hope that she's doing well. I hope that things are going well for her. I hope she's on a good path. I don't know. And then, you know, my oldest really floundered for a while and he's still, still struggling financially. Um, and I, there's nothing I can do to help. I can't afford to. He's, you know, he's making his own choices. Uh, he's got a good job. So hopefully he gets himself stable. And then, you know, Robert's going into the military, which I'm super proud of. But before that, he made some decisions that I was really not happy with. He experimented with some things that made me really worried. And, you know, he has found his way. He has leveled out. But it was really scary during that time where he was experimenting and not acting like himself and, you know, not knowing what to do as a mom and not being able to like take the wheel and course correct because he's an adult now and he has to do that himself. Fortunately, it seems that he did. He's 
not really experimenting with stuff now. He's going into the military. Everything's, he's on a good path. And I'm really proud of him. But then I also have this other worry. He's in the military. He's running to the danger. And even though he promised me that he was going to try to get something that wasn't front lines, he signed up for front lines. The thing that he signed up for, he'd be running the big machinery right in the battle. And he told me that he, after he does, so he's got three different trainings. He's got basic, ATI, and then something else. And after those, they're nine weeks each. After that last one, then he can go on assignments. And he absolutely does plan on going overseas to be deployed in the active wars. And that's terrible. That's uh, absolutely terrifying. I keep picturing my little boy running to the danger. Proud of him? Scared for him. Uh, when he was little, he was the kid that as soon as I opened the door, he would dart for the rope. I always had to have, like, I had this little backpack thing with a leash on it because, you know, I had a bunch of other kids. And this one darting off into the danger was scary so I could not let him out of the house without this this harness on him he was the one that would I'd go to the bathroom and he'd be climbing up on top of the refrigerator he was a year old climbed up on top of my mother-in-law's table in her kitchen when I was in the bathroom and was trying to jump off and I couldn't get to him fast enough and he bit through his tongue He's the kid that had stitches on his chin because he was running through a construction area when we were remodeling the hallway. Um, he's the kid that got a hold of um, one of those staple guns and stapled his finger. And we <laughs> go to the ER to get it taken out. Surprisingly, he didn't break any bones, but he was always the kid that was running to the danger. And I can't protect him anymore. He's running to the danger. I can't stop it. It's really, really hard. I don't know. You spend your whole life trying to protect them. And then one day you can't. And there's really nothing that prepares you for that. There's just not. He's leaving in two weeks. And I'm not ready for this. But I also don't have a choice. Well, I'm trying to decide if I want to cut my hair. It actually look kind of cute. It was like a short bob, but I don't know because it also like these curlies at the bottom. That was random, sorry. <sighs> yeah. What do you do when you've always been your kid's source of strength and you've always protected them and you've always fought the battles and now you can't now they're facing battles that are bigger than you ever imagined for them, and they're choosing these battles. I joined some Facebook groups for military moms, and that helps, because I'm seeing all these other moms going through the same thing. But I don't know how to do this. I feel like this entire year has been like one of those video games where you're doing parkour and you got to keep running and jumping and running and jumping because the floor is lava and if it catches up to you, you'll... I feel like I can't even catch my breath sometimes. It's just so much. Between my husband's back problems, he doesn't really help me with anything. I mean, he didn't help much to begin with. He does work. He has a paycheck, so 
I'm very grateful for that. I am. I'm absolutely very grateful for that. He pays for stuff. But most of the time I feel like I'm single parenting. There's a term, married single mom. He just goes to work, comes home, watches TV, plays video games, not really involved. And I've begged and pleaded and tried to get him to be involved. And at this point I've just given up. He's not gonna, he's not gonna. But anytime I try to make him, he just gets mad, makes everything more difficult. Um, I think the term is weaponized incompetence. So I've just kind of given up on that, I guess. Just trying to be grateful for what he does provide. And just accepting the fact that I've been a married single mom for 20 years and it's just not going to change. Um, but with his back problems, it made it even worse because even the few things that he did help me with, he can't or won't. And then he didn't have the surgery. Uh, he has lost quite a bit of weight. He's been on Wagovi, so I guess that's helping. Um, I wish that he would join the gym with me and like work his body stronger like I have, but he doesn't want to, so he's not going to. So I have to work that much harder to make my body strong because Tilt needs me to lift him all the time, every day, forever. Uh, and then Tilt almost dying this year, that was, I still don't really know how to process that. That was, that was intense. I'm so glad that he's okay. I'm so scared that he's going to have to go through it again. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. And then there's been like other people that I care about that have gone through some really extreme stuff that have been there to, to help. And I'm so grateful that I was able to help. But it, it, it takes a toll, you know? It's hard when you got, when you're watching somebody you love go through something and you know you can only do too much, there's so much, and you know if you get too involved, you're gonna get hurt. There's been a lot of good things this year too, though. I mean, I hit 200 books. Actually, it's 210 right now. I've done a lot of drawing. Uh, my when I took was in the hospital, my portraits were a big hit. Everybody wanted one. <laughs> I'm doing this Bay Days booth. I started this channel. Um, met all of you, wonderful people. I made some friends. Not really face to face friends, but still friends. Still helps, you know. I've overcome some fears. I did that ropes course. Uh, which I want to do again, but I'm also kind of scared to do again because it was still scary, you know? Um, it's also really expensive. So I don't think I can actually afford to do it again this summer, but I'd like to. Watching my, watching Robbie get through his weird phase and become a man. much. And then Ronan turns 18 next year. No idea what the future holds for him. He wants to go into acting. I really hope that he does. There's supposed to be tryouts for a local play next month and I really, really hope he goes out for it. He wants me to do it with him and I want to but I'm also not sure if I can give that kind of time to something every day. So I'm not sure how that's going to play out because that's, it's a lot, you know, and with the fact that my husband doesn't really help with the kids, it's always on me. Um, I either have to find a babysitter or, which is really hard to do by the way, really hard to do. It's either insanely expensive, you can't find somebody you can trust, 
or there's just nobody that can watch this many kids. And then there's Tilk to think about this. When his caregivers have them, it's one thing, but evenings, when they're going to do play practice, um, I can't really leave him here with my husband because he can't pick him up, he can't get on the floor with him, uh, he never remembers what meds he needs or what time, even if I write it down, he gets it wrong. And then there's all the little kids, you know, but I also don't want, I don't want Ronan to feel like I'm not doing the thing with him because I know how important this is to him. And so I'm really not sure how that's going to work out, but I'm going to try. I don't know, guys, it's just a lot. It's a lot. You know, looking at how cute this pastel is, I think I might just leave it. It's gonna, if I do dye it before Bay Days, it's just gonna fade super, super fast. It seems like a waste. So I'll just let it continue to fade until it's almost like, because some of it's like turning blonde again. And then it'll be like a fresh canvas to start over. I'll probably do the same colors again, but I'm not entirely sure. And anyway, thanks for listening to my randomness today. I'll see you all very soon. There's a subscribe button up here. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, please like, share, and subscribe. I'm so glad you're here. And down here is another video from my channel. See you soon.